Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this video, we'll be covering logics. Logics are important because although we know how to write if statements, uh, as we've seen in the previous video, the way we arrange them and um, what, how we check uh, whether statements are true or false can significantly affect um, the complexity of the code as well as um, readability. So we're going to have a look at logics now. So Python does allow you to do some bit of uh, lazy evaluation or the short circuit evaluation, which means if it suspects that it doesn't have to evaluate the additional um, conditions, then it will skip it. For example, we have a condition A or B. Um, this returns true if A is true. So if A is already true, then B will not be evaluated, only will be evaluated if A is false, okay? And this applies to the end condition. So if A and B, uh, this can return false if A is false without checking B. So it will only check whether B is uh, true or false if uh, A is true, okay? So this is called a lazy evaluation and Python does this. Um, so this is good to check whether um, your condition and logic is actually true or not. So here's an example. Has a second name equals false and a second name actually gets uh, established inside this if condition. Um, and then we have this uh, two if conditions where one works and the other one doesn't uh, if the second name exists, uh, if the second name does not exist. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. So let's uh, restart shell. Okay. So now let's create uh, has second name equals false. Actually, let's write that in the code here. Okay. And actually, I will not do the uh, if condition. Um, so we're going to skip it and then create this as true. And by mistake, you made some uh, errors in your initial if conditions that this didn't get established, even if the has second name was true. So if has second name and second name equal equal Fred, then I can write print hello. Okay, so run it. So as you can see, we get an error if A was true, but let's change that to false, false, and run it. Then there is no error. Okay, so if only I had a second name and it was Fred, I would print hello, whatever you have it, um, it will print, but since it's false, I skipped the if condition. Um, so you can see that I didn't print anything and I didn't even get an error. But as we've seen before, if this was set back to true, then what it needs to do is it needs to know, since this is true, it will check the second condition, but second name hasn't been defined, so you get an error. So these are the scenarios where these lazy evaluations may affect some of the logics. And therefore, it is important that you check and double check your logics that you, you do cover all scenarios like boundary cases, okay? So let's have a look at uh, simplifying logics because the longer your logic is, uh, it is harder to evaluate and check whether uh, you have a good coverage of different scenarios, right? So our goal again is that programs must be as simple and readable as possible. So we have different ways to avoid complexity. So first one is simplifying the logical expressions. So why write long expressions when we can uh, simplify them to short? For example, using the De Morgan's theorem, which we'll cover very shortly. You can also uh, flatten nested codes. So we have seen that in our previous video where we had an if statement inside an else statement, but we can avoid that by uh, pulling out the condition and putting that as a um, else if condition. Okay, so I will not go over that again. 
Um, we can also introduce temporary Boolean variables to check um, whether conditions are true or not, rather than combining multiple Boolean variables to check that, and writing Boolean valued functions. Um, but I think we might cover that at the end of the lecture. All right, so stay tuned for that. So De Morgan's theorem to start with. Basically, logics can be rearranged, and uh, depending on the situation, uh, one expression compared to the other may be more simple and clear. So for example, uh, not A and B is uh, equivalent to not A or not B. And then we also have not A or B is equal to not A and not B. So here's an example. Uh, I'm not going if it's raining or I'm feeling tired. This is this expression can is equivalent to I'm going if it's not raining and I'm not feeling tired. So you can write either way. So if not bracket is raining or is tired, but maybe that's not very intuitive for reading. So instead you might write if not is raining and not is tired. So this one you can e uh, easily read a little bit differently like if is not raining and is not tired, then I'll go, right? So depending on how you um, represent the logic in the condition, uh, the readability can change quite dramatically. Obvious, uh, of course, uh, some people may prefer the first option, um, but yeah, so uh, we have different um, ways of interpreting which expressions may be easier than the others, but um, do consider uh, using like uh, De Morgan's theorem to change how the expressions are uh, expressed uh, in those conditions. Okay, um, unless a is zero or the discriminant is negative, print the roots. So we have seen the um, calculating the uh, quadratic formula. We can rewrite that if a is non-zero and the discriminant is non-negative, uh, print the roots. Okay. Um, again, here is a, another different flavor of rewriting the same statement uh, into different logical expressions. So the first one can be written as if not a equal equal zero or discriminant less than zero. Uh, but you can rewrite this as if a is not zero and discriminant is greater than equal to zero. Okay. Um, so some, some may uh, prefer the first option. But I believe most scenarios, uh, the second one is actually easier to read. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about some truth tables. Um, truth tables allows us to check whether we have the good coverage of uh, different scenarios. So it, since uh, Boolean values are either true or false, it's very easy to make a table of values of some Boolean expressions for all possible parameter values. Um, and this is called the truth table. And using this, we can check whether we have covered all uh, different uh, scenarios um, when we have variables uh, assigned to true or false. For example, not A or B can be expressed like this. And then we have uh, all combinations of uh, variable A and B options. And then check what's the uh, output that we expect them to. All right, let's do that. And so A and B, they are both false. Then false or false equals false. False or true is true. And if there's a one true component, they're all going to be true. And then what we're going to do is convert it by placing not. So this becomes true, this becomes false, false, and false. So hopefully this truth table is um, quite uh, straightforward. Okay, so let's try this uh, next truth table. So you can pause your video here and try this by your hand and then um, resume to check whether your answer is correct. Assuming you have done it, let's go over this, right? So now again, we have all combinations of A and B, uh, so false and false. So not A, we're just going to convert. Not A is true. Not B is true. True, false, and then uh, false, true, false, false. 
Okay, so now we have <clears throat> not A and not B. So we're just going to do end of these two com uh, combinations. True and true, true and false is false, false and true is false, false and false is false. Okay, so the last column is same as the previous table. So here we can see true, false, false, false. True, false, false, false. Okay, so this proves that uh, De Morgan's law is actually working. Um, so you can try uh, doing the other example. That is this one. Okay, how was it? Ah, the other one, not A and not B. This one, not A or not B. So you can try that one. Okay, otherwise, moving on. Um, the other technique is to use a temporary Boolean variable. So consider checking if a row column specification for a square on a chessboard is valid, right? So that's our scenario. Uh, we can implement it uh, something like this. If not row is greater than zero and row is less than eight and column is greater than or equal to zero and column is less than eight. That means our next uh, reference to a chessboard cell is valid or not, we're checking that, and we can write it like this as a long um, if condition. Okay, but this can be more readable by introducing some temporary Boolean variables uh, for each um, component. So, for example, is valid row equals our first condition here, row is greater than zero and row is less than eight. Uh, remember, we can rewrite this as um, zero less than equal to row less than eight in Python. However, um, if you prefer writing it this way, um, that is also possible. And again, this uh, can be written in other languages, so it's good to know this. And I, anyway, uh, then you can also write is valid column uh, in a similar way. Just grab this guy into here. Oh, I should use pen more often. This is quite convenient. Into here, like this. So then we can just uh, collect those terms and then write it together. If not is valid row and is valid column, then we can print, uh, print invalid square. So if valid row and valid column, and then we're putting a not in front, which means it's false, then it's an invalid square. So this way it's actually easier to read and understand what the conditions are rather than checking what these are. Okay, so maybe it could be trivial for such simple scenarios like this, but as your condition gets larger and larger, uh, introducing some temporary variables um, may save the readability as well. Okay, and again, you can use the De Morgan's uh, to rewrite if statement from here to here. Okay, not valid row and not valid column, uh, not valid row or not valid column then it's an invalid square. Okay? So actually this is much easier to read than uh, this one above. Okay? So we cover the De Morgan's law, um, uh, introducing the temporary Boolean variables, and also we covered in the previous video about no, how not to nest the if statements. Okay? Um, in terms of star rules, these are actually not picked up by the pilot checker, but it is good thing to note that using names beginning with prefixes like is or like can for Boolean variables and functions uh, is um, recommended. Okay, so if you know that the variable you're storing is a Boolean type, then starting with like is valid or is and the file or something like this, it's quite intuitive to understand what this might be storing. Similar with the Boolean function where the return type is a Boolean. Okay, now let's look at Boolean valued functions. So these functions are the ones that actually returns the Boolean values. So if rather than um, using all the variables and chucking it into an if statement to make sense of uh, what you need to calculate as a logic, if it's complicated, why don't you put it out into a function, let the function calculate the logics for you, and then just call the function when you use it. So let's do that. 
uh, instead of this uh, def is valid is a boolean function we get a coordinate uh, i will skip the um, doc string for this function but you should always write doc string return coordinate is greater than equal to zero and coordinate is less than eight so we are continuing with our chessboard example so that is our is valid coordinate so then now we can write if not uh, is valid row or not is valid column oh i have one too many brackets okay then i can print invalid square okay so then we can quickly just define row equals three four uh column equals two and then run this uh, let's get rid of this if statements up here and run it here then since it is a valid square i didn't print anything but let's quickly make this say nine then here we expect it to print invalid square okay so here's an alternative one so this is one way of doing it but alternatively um, you can write is invalid function instead of is valid and then check the outside region then uh, this can be read as if is invalid row or is invalid column then you can print invalid square but one or the other they both have the same style it's just uh, um, checking whether it's invalid or valid coordinate for the row and column so writing program uh, looks like this okay um, and checking uh, whether um, we want to convert from celsius to fahrenheit or fahrenheit to celsius um, so this is the code for you you have it in your lecture note so what i'll do is i'll leave this up to you to test it and play with this code right so i hope um, you get better sense of logics so that uh, when it comes to writing if statements or any other conditions Hopefully, uh, these uh, techniques will help you write more clear and concise um, conditions uh, in your program. Alright, so that's it. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye!